Today's video is brought to you by Calvin and Average TX. We're talking offset red dots. Now, quick disclaimer before we get into this, I haven't been the biggest fan of offset red dots to the side, mainly because I felt like a lot of people were misusing them. And after going and talking to Joe from Bruiser Industries, Nick from Velux, uh, Vale Solutions and JBS Training Group, and kind of starting to pick their brain on their setups and then why they run them and some of the pros they see from that, I started to see value in these offset dots and, and the way that they run them and the reasoning behind it. So I felt like if I'm gonna hate on a certain setup, I have to give it a fair shake. So I reached out to the guys over at Big Tech's Ordinance and I said, hey, I have an idea for a video and I wanna test these two out and I wanna build these monstrosities. And so they helped me source the parts to make this happen. So if you're interested in running an offset dot or if you're interested in anything at all, go check out Big Tech's Ordinance, use Goon Life and the link down below. It saves you some money and it helps the channel out. Also, thanks to Tag Firearms who sourced the 14.5 Noveski. Uh, they helped me get hands on this so that I could do this video so I would have two to compare side by side. Uh, big thank you to them. So again, Goon Life saves you some money there. Go shop with them. They are both big supporters of the channel and Average Joe's. So thank you to both Big Tech's Ordinance and Tag Firearms. As we dive into this whole idea or concept of offset dots, uh, we'll start with the LPVO with the offset red dot because I feel like that's more palatable for people. Most people will look at that and go, okay, yeah, that kind of makes sense or you know, I can see the value in that. Uh, versus running the red dot with an offset red dot. So we'll start here. Everything applies to both, but uh, I think it'll be easier for people to understand here. And then we'll look at how it applies to running a red dot with an offset red dot. Uh, this is gonna be kind of like our gateway drug, if you will, into offset red dots. When I went out to Oregon and hung out with Joe Dawson from Bruiser Industries, I got to run his 14.5 or his 13.9 setup with a LPVO and offset red dot. So I talked with him at length about kind of what I didn't like about certain setups and he told me why he does it, and then he showed me the benefits of it, and then we got to test it. We tested it at close engagements and then also out at preci precision shots out to five, six, 700 yards. And that was when I began to see some of the value in having this type of setup where it really kind of started to click for me and started to make sense. Traditionally in the past, I've been a big fan of the traditional height scope with then a scope mount like the Reptilia one that has this piece that you can mount on top and then run your red dot on top. Now, the reason I like that is because ultimately what ends up happening is it puts your red dot almost at the height of a unity mount, either a little bit above or a little bit below, depending on the, the specific setup. But it would put it at that height, so you almost have a unity mount red dot, and then when you're looking out at distance, right, so if we're looking out to six, 700 yards, I can use the dot to kind of find the target and then drop down into the scope at magnification to be able to be on target already. And I found that to be a very useful tool and found it easier to find uh, targets at distance that way versus trying to do it through the scope or trying to zoom in the scope once you're on it. That's just a personal preference, but that's why I was a fan of that. Once I started running Unity Fast scope mounts, I couldn't do that because putting a dot on top of it then put it way too high for me. Like the, the, the scope and the rifle were just kind of floating and I didn't really have any sort of uh, basis for my head to be in a consistent position. So specifically looking through a scope, it was a little bit difficult because the eye, like my eye position was always a little bit off and I felt like I was always hunting for it. So I never could get that sort of setup to work. So I, I primarily just use the LPVO at one power and then zoom in as needed. And that's primarily how I run my setups because most of my setups are either on a fast riser or on a fast mount. So they're all typically at the same height. But as I got these setups together and I started working through these, I found these setups to be useful in other ways. So what are the pros of running an offset red dot versus something like traditional backup irons? Everything that we learned from running red dots on pistols also applies to running backup red dots on rifles. Namely that it allows us to be threat focused when we're running them. So if you're running iron sights as your backup, you're not necessarily threat focused, you're focused on that front sight post. Um, Red dots work better for people with deteriorating eye vision, like myself, because you're focusing on one plane of vision versus three, because three, with the irons, you have your rear iron, your front iron, and then you have whatever it is your target is. So you have those three planes of focus that you've got to kind of figure out between so that you can line up everything. For somebody with, like me, with deteriorating eye vision, you only have to focus on the threat and just place the dot over it, just like any traditional red dot. So there's all those benefits, along with it not being affected by sight radius, so as we get into shorter or longer guns and you're running iron sights, it affects how your iron sights work because of that sight radius. You, you have limited space. 
on like a 10.5, your sight radius is different on your, through your irons than something on like a 16 inch gun. And as you get into running lasers and lights and other things on your rail, you may have to move those around and you may not get the full use of that sight radius. So you may have to bring those sights closer in together. Um, or if you're running like the, the backups that run through the Unity fast mount, you have the rear sight that's built in and then the front side post that's also built in. I mean, you're talking a very short sight radius. It's not ideal, but it gets the job done. But you can run something like an offset red dot that isn't affected by that sight radius. And it is still as useful, if not more useful. And on top of that, it's easier to learn for the average shooter. So for the person who is new into a gun, um, learning on a red dot is much easier than learning iron sights. And most people honestly don't practice iron sights with rifles enough and don't know how to sight them properly or how to align them properly. So it's easier for somebody to get on it and have an offset red dot. If they're used to training with a red dot then they can just go to an offset red dot, it's the same. There's no, there's no learning curve. You're just learning one particular thing and you just have two of them, whether it's an LPVO with a red dot or a red dot with a red dot. The second thing that I would say is that the speed of deployment. So if, for whatever reason, your primary optic goes down, in this case, this night force attacker, if something happened and it went down and I needed to get to backup sights, if I had irons, traditionally, I would have to take the optic off and then flip those irons up to be able to use them or run some sort of offset irons. Now, offset irons do work, but the issue you run into is that sometimes they're affected by your laser or by your light, so you have to change your, your gun setup in order to accommodate those offset sights. And they're not ideal and getting those up or getting them into the fight is slower than just rotating the gun to a canted offset sight like this aim point. Third thing I would say is that running the offset optic versus the iron sights saves you rail space. So as I mentioned before, sometimes those offset irons can affect how you set up your laser. You may have to move it further back or further forward, or it just it's just kind of awkward sometimes, especially depending on what light and laser combo you're running and just overall how you're gonna set up. So it, it gives you more rail space to use and it allows you to be more flexible in your setup of setting it up to be more ergonomic to what you need and your specific needs are with whatever gun you're running. If it's a shorter gun or a longer gun, you just have more flexibility because you have more rail space because your optic is mounted to the same base as your primary optic. So your backup doesn't take up any more space than your primary optic already does if you're using something like the Unity mount. Now there's others out there like the Arasaka, I think T-Rex Arms has one, a few others, that are also good options that don't take up rail space or you can place them in, in areas where they don't really affect your rail space as much as offset irons do. The fourth thing I would say would be shooting on the move. So talking with uh, Mark from JBS Training Group, one of the things he mentioned to me was that when you're shooting on the move, specifically if you're if you're a right-handed shooter and you're sh walking from left to right, shooting across your body, it's super easy to shoot through an optic, particularly an LPVO. And I tested this with the attacker because uh, through a red dot, it's easier. You, you have more, a better eye box, better eye relief, like it's infinite, right? There's no issues. When you're shooting through a scope, you have that eye relief issue. So when you're going left to right, no issues, but it's when you go right to left where you start to have issues because the gun has to be in a weird spot. You're you're reaching way across your body. You're having to turret a whole lot to be able to stay on target and make those hits. And he said, well, if you have an offset dot as a backup, it allows you to camp the gun to get rid of some of that tension in your body to allow you to turret freely so that you can continue to make those hits. So I, I ran it um, left to right, and then I also ran it right to left with the LPVO and then using the offset dot. And I can tell you that using the offset dot was absolutely easier. I felt like I was able to put shots on target faster and I wasn't limited by the uh, the eye box or eye relief of the LPVO. So th this is one of those instances where, just to show that in that one instance going, going from right to left, it was easier to use the offset. But in general, you could use the offset and it'd be easier both ways because you're not limited by that, that eye box or that eye relief. The fifth thing that I would say is that when I was talking with Joe at length in Oregon, it gives you the ability to shoot very quickly at both close and far distances. So we had courses of fire set up where we were shooting anywhere from 100 yards out to six or 700 yards. Now we could make those hits and Joe, Joe explained to me, he's like, you know, with your gun set up properly, you can make those hits with your red dot on A zones or reduced C zones with the red dot. You, you make those hits no problem and then you can turn over into the reticle to be able to have your hold at that 550, 670, whatever we were at 
and to be able to make that switch very quickly. Now this, this is a great function both for self-defense and for three gun shooters or competition shooters. Um, it, it allows you to, to work both near and far targets very quickly in rapid succession, not having to make a lot of, of big adjustments. So the sixth thing that I would say is that when I was talking with uh, buddy Dave from Vulcan Machine Works, he said that when he was at Darcy, one of the things they talked about running offset red dots was that if you're in a situation where you're doing CQB, now this applies more to guys who are doing this professionally than maybe somebody like the average Joe or a standard civilian, but if you're in a position where you have to hold security and you're on a barricade, like a doorway, and you're holding security on a hallway and you've got a long hallway and you've got to look down, he said that they learned that canting the rifle and working through the offset red dot is more comfortable and easier to get in there and hold that position for a long time versus having it straight up and down. I put it up on a VTAC barricade and I checked that out and you can see from the, the face on view, it does leave your body a little more exposed. So that is something that's more of like a training thing that you'd have to figure out. But what I will say is that the way the weight of the gun sat when I was on that barricade, it was definitely more balanced and more comfortable doing it canted versus straight up and down because you have all the weight on top of the gun that wants to go one way or another. So by allowing that to cant just a little bit and holding it that way, it was definitely more comfortable and it felt like a position I could hold longer versus sitting through the LPVO straight up and down. One other thing I've heard from guys like Bale Solutions or, or other people who run offset LPVOs is if you're doing vehicle work, if you're working from the front of a vehicle, like say that the car is this way and we are working over the hood or over the trunk of a, of a car, some guys will lay their gun flat like this. And that is definitely an option. Uh, versus doing it like this. This is difficult to get on there and get a good solid position without the gun sliding around. So they've said that if you have the offset by doing this, by being able to cant with the offset, it allows you to get a more stable position on the front or back of that car. And I think that is also a, a viable option for running an offset red dot, um, whether it's with a just a, a backup red dot or with an LPVO. And then the last thing I would say is that it's easier to move from gun to gun. If you have something like the Unity mount setup where it's integrated, it is definitely way easier to take this entire mount and entire setup off, put it on another gun, versus having to take irons off and an optic, uh, or even if you're running something like the Arasaka mount or the T-Rex or whoever else. Uh, those are, are good options, and they're still easier to move than having to take the two irons off and change your entire setup to get those on and off. So it's just easier to, to move around. Uh, those are all the pros that I saw, particularly in running it with the, an LPVO. Now earlier I said that I wasn't a fan initially of this type of setup, because I felt like guys were using it wrong. And what I meant by that was that in the past, when I've seen guys run an offset red dot with an LPVO, they save their money, they spend 1,500 to 3,000, 4,000, $5,000 on a good quality uh, one to eight, one to six, one to 10, whatever it is. And they want that true one power, they want daylight bright, they get a good, good mount for it. And then they put an offset dot and they spend three to $500 on an offset dot, and they end up shooting 90 to 98% of time out of that offset red dot. And for me, looking at that, I'm like, well, then you don't need the LPVO, you just need the red dot, get rid of the LPVO and put the red dot on there. And that's what I mean by I felt like guys were using it wrong, that you spent all this money for capability that you're not using. And what I end up hearing guys saying is like, oh, well, I have the LPVO just in case. Like, I know I mainly shoot through the red dot, but I had the LPVO just in case I want to reach out to distance or just in case I have to go, you know, uh, you know, something happens and, and stuff hits the fan and I got to make that shot at 500 yards. And I would tell you that just in case doesn't exist. Just in case isn't a real scenario. Just in case isn't a skill set, right? You have to have the skill to be able to make that shot and skill doesn't magically show up on the day of the test. If that were the case, you would go to any country in the world and day of start speaking the language of that country, but you can't because Skill doesn't just show up the day of the test. So that's why I say guys misuse the setup. I do think this setup is a viable option. I do think there is value in it, but if you're mainly shooting through the red dot, maybe reconsider having the LPVO on there. Maybe take the LPVO off and run something like just a red dot with an offset red dot, which then takes us into red dot with the offset red dot. So what are the pros of a setup like this or what is the value in having a setup with a red dot within an offset red dot? Now, everything that we learned with the LPVO also applies to this. So again, being able to be threat focused, all the things we learned with having a red dot versus irons, um, the mobility, 
being able to work around certain barricades like cars, uh, holding thresholds, all that still applies here. The only difference is, is instead of having backup iron sights, you now have a backup red dot. And this became a big issue for me because again, as I said at the beginning, I mainly run Unity fast risers or fast mounts on all my guns. It's just my preference, it's what works for me. But the issue you run into is that if you run a Unity fast riser with a EOTech or with the UH-1 from Vortex or uh, the loop holder, whatever your optic of choice is, you can't run backup irons with it. You can, but the issue is that if you ever need to deploy them, you'll have to take this optic off in order to use those irons or you'll have to run offset irons. Now, if you're in a situation where you need your backup irons very quickly, taking an optic off to get to your irons isn't a viable option. It takes too long, right? You're, you're in the middle of a gunfight if you need them in a serious situation. Uh, or you can run the offset, offset irons. But as we mentioned before, the pros versus cons of running a offset red dot versus irons also apply here. So we know that the offset red dot is a better and more viable option than offset irons. So if we were to look at the two, the two options, and we said that the red dot makes sense for the LPVO, then it would make just as much sense for the red dot as a, as a backup for another red dot. So that's why I think this option is, is a great option for a lot of people. And you don't have to learn two different things, right? You're not learning red dot and irons, you're only learning red dot. It's just two different red dots, that's it. The other thing I would say is that if you're running the Unity Fast Riser, you can't run offset irons with the fast mount for the magnifier because the magnifier, when it flips down, sits so low on the rail on the top that even though it's just the, the mount of the offset iron sights, it'll hit that and it won't go all the way down. It's a minor thing, but it, it is noticeable. So by having the offset red dot, it frees up that space for you to be able to run the magnifier, but it also allows you the freedom of being able to run that magnifier wherever you want. Again, we talked about rail space with the LPVO, and this I think is where you notice it more as if you're running a magnifier, because the eye relief on those is so bad that you have to kind of play with it to, to figure out where the right area is for you. And sometimes you're limited by where your irons are and you have to take those off and move them. So by not having those irons in the way at all, you have more freedom to play with to get that, that magnifier in the right spot for your eyes. So again, it just makes it a more capable option for most people. Now they're not entirely perfect. There are some cons to running these types of setups. And one is gonna be weight. Yes, the, uh, the, the mount itself plus the optic is gonna weigh more than your iron sights, especially some of the lighter, like more minimalistic iron sights. On top of that, the cost of getting into a setup like this is gonna cost you more than getting into iron sights. You can get a decent set of irons for 100, 200 bucks. Your optic mount and then optic itself are probably gonna run you anywhere from three to $400. So it is a little bit more pricey to get into this setup. Shooting offhand for some people will be weird because if, you're, if that's your backup sight and you have to use it and you go to your offhand, it's gonna be difficult for some but some people actually prefer it because it allows them that more freedom, a bigger window to see through that they feel like they can work through it better than their traditional optic. Now, you'll, you'll have to test that yourself. I have not found that to be the case for me, but some people prefer that, some people like that. The other thing is barricades. If you're in a situation where you have to use your backup red dot and you're working a barricade and it's an offset red dot, Something like the squares on a VTAC aren't a big deal. Um, you can work your way around the, all the little L shapes uh, up, down, up and down the stairs of the VTAC. But when you get into the mailbox slots, some of the diagonal ones or the horizontal ones, there's not a good position that you can get in to run from the offset red dot. It's a little bit tricky. It's not as nice and neat as running just a traditional uh, vertical optic or some, some other options out there. So just keep that in mind. Now you're talking about a very small percentage of your shooting, so weighing the pros and the cons. And then the last con to running the offset red dot, whether it be with an LPVO or with a, another red dot, is the internet trolls. People are gonna troll you on the internet all the time for this. Now I did make the setup where I had the EOTech with the offset aim point just to kind of trigger some people. And that could be a viable option. Does it really make sense for a lot of people? Probably not, it's way too expensive, not very practical, but it, it it could be used, but just be aware that, yeah, you're probably gonna get trolled for it. But I remember when pistols with red dots first started becoming popular for like everyday carrier duty, they got trolled all the time. And people always talked about how irons were better and irons are faster. And now more and more people, if not most people in the industry run red dots on their pistols. So I think it's just one of those things for the industry just needs time to catch up. 
Now I went and tested uh, both of these setups and it took me a little bit of time just to get used to canting the gun and, and turning it. But I will say that working at close distances, uh, getting used to as if the optic, the, like the battery died or something happened and it, it was just broken, it didn't work. And rotating, it became very, very quick. And it, it was, there wasn't a noticeable difference. And the other thing too that I would say is that if you decide to run a setup like this, you'll have to make the decision about how you want to zero the two optics. So some guys will zero their LPVO or their primary optic at one distance, and then they'll zero the other optic at a closer distance and they'll use it for CQB or CQB distance targets. Um, so they'll have their optic set up for 100 yards and then the offset one for like 15 so that they're on if they're running like a three gun match or a two gun or wh whatever it may be. Uh, I have, I prefer to run a 100 yard zero on all my optics now just for simplicity. And that's, that's purely it. Just so I only have to memorize one set of holds and I don't have to worry about, oh, if I use this optic, it's this hold at this distance. Or if I use this optic, it's this hold. It's just across the board, it makes it easier for me uh, to, to have those holds be similar. But that is something you will have to test and decide for yourself. But after working through these for a day or two and then running some courses of fire where I ran uh, up just to, to simulate that I was working for my LPVO and then had to go to the red dot, being able to have the holds be the same at distance made it super easy when I made that transition to the red dot coming from the LPVO. And, uh, and, and also working like targets, uh, tr target transition, like if shooting one target dot goes down, go to the other target, it made it super simple to, to know where my offset was, especially at closer distances. These are all things that you'll have to keep in mind as you're testing this or as you get into a setup like this for yourself. The question is, do you need this? Is it really the future? of guns is the future of optic set setups for most people in the firearms industry. As you look at the optics and the optics we have on the market, what would it take for one of these to go down? Like something like an EOTech, it's pretty reasonable that it might go down while you're using it, simply because of the battery life. Not to say that it's not a good optic, but they're known for not having great battery life compared to something like an aim point, like a T2 or a Comp M5. Uh, on the other hand, you have the Night Force, right? Great optic. What would it take for that optic to go down, right? If, even if the battery died and your red dot inside wasn't working, you still have an etched reticle. Uh, maybe the glass shattered. Maybe you took some sort of direct hit. Maybe you dropped and fell on it and it cracked. Whatever, whatever that scenario may be, it's going to take something substantial for that to happen. Um, now, is that is that very probable? I don't know. I can't say. But what I will say is that the the ultimate deciding factor for all of us is. Does it allow you to be more capable and or does it make it easier for you to accomplish whatever your goal or your mission is? And if the answer to that is yes, then I think this is definitely the future for you or for this industry. And to say it another way is that the only consistent metric we have in terms of shooting in our industry is speed and accuracy. How quickly can you make accurate hits? Now I would say, do these setups, whichever one, you decide to use or whichever one you try, do these setups allow you to make accurate hits faster or, or more accurately? And if the answer to that is yes, to either one of those, then yes, it absolutely is the future of setups for the average consumer, for guys in law enforcement. Uh, and I think that this truly does, through my testing and through talking to the other guys that, uh, that I mentioned earlier, I think this is definitely the future of the industry and I think it's a viable solution, more viable than running just traditional offset irons. You will ultimately have to test and decide for yourself, uh, but I do think that it is a worthwhile investment and I think that you'll see this become more commonplace for, for average shooters. So if you're interested in purchasing either one of these setups, go check out Big Tech's Ordnance, use the code down below, go check out Tag of Firearms, use the code down below. If you're interested in getting training using these setups or have more questions about them, Go hit up uh, Joe from Bruiser Industries, go hit up Vale Solutions, go hit up Velux Training Group, and go hit up JBS Training Group. I will link them all down below. Uh, go hit any of those guys, they'd be, they'd be happy to answer any questions you have, or go take one of their courses and learn to use your equipment to its full capabilities. Develop the skill set to really use these, because that's what matters most. Like I said before, this, the, the skill set doesn't just show up on the day of the test, so you have to put in the work to get that. Um, but I do think these are, are viable options that will, will help the average consumer. Hope you guys found this informational. Hopefully it helped you and answered some questions you might have or maybe exposed you to a new idea. Make sure you guys hit that like, subscribe, karate chop that bell to so get notified every time I upload a video and I will see you guys in the next one.